Welcome to Lecture 6 of Advanced Microeconomics with me, Dr. Craig Webb. In today's lecture, we're going to be studying something called moral hazard. So what is moral hazard? Essentially, it's the idea that a decision maker uh, is taking greater risks, perhaps even inappropriate risks, maybe risks that affect other people, and they're doing so because they have insurance that protects themselves from the personal costs of these risks. The purpose of the introductory clip was simply to notice that intro Craig pays a lot more attention to his driving when he remembered that his insurance had been cancelled. While this is a, a small example, consider this idea of being willing to take greater risks when you know that you're insured. Suppose you are running a company which sells mortgages, for example. Now, when you sell mortgages, of course, there, there are risks involved. The people that you're lending to might not pay back. Suppose that you find a way to insure yourself against the downsides of selling mortgages, perhaps by selling those loans on to large banks who then package those mortgages into uh, mortgage-backed securities on a very large scale and trade these um, on the international financial markets. Well, now that you've insured yourself against the downside of selling mortgages, it's party time. You can sell mortgages to almost anybody and simply pass on the risks. No income, no job, ninja, don't worry about it. Just keep dishing out the loans and passing them on. Of course, this is what happened in the years running up to the uh, 2008 recession when the financial, uh, when, the, when a crash or a slump in the US housing market sent shockwaves throughout the international financial markets and led to the worst economic recession in living memory until this coronavirus came along. In the lecture notes, I've written a brief summary of the role that moral hazard played in the 2008 financial crisis and the following recession. Uh, this is not an authoritative survey of how and why the financial crisis happened, but this idea of moral hazard came up at several points. In particular, moral hazard made the news in a big way when governments considered the idea of bailing out the banks, um, they were deemed too big to fail. Of course, this type of language is um, obviously going to cause moral hazard. If banks are insured against the downside of their risk, if they are guaranteed to be bailed out when things go wrong, then they really can take excessive risks. In this lecture, we're going to focus on a very simple model called the principal agent model, where effectively we're going to have an employer who's designing a contract in order to pay his employee. And the employee can choose to exert either high effort or low effort. Moral hazard will be seen very clearly when the employer considers paying the employee with a risk-free contract. Of course, if the employee is fully insured against any income risk, they really have no reason to put in any effort. So that's where moral hazard is going to come up in this model. How do we handle it? Well, we're going to need to cleverly design contracts to incentivize the right behavior. And of course, this will require some notion of an incentive compatibility constraint, which is going to impose a cost on the firm. So we'll use a simple model so that we can analyze uh, neatly the solutions to this, how we handle asymmetric information in the sense of hidden action, behaviors and actions that cannot be verified by the firm. And also so that we can show the uh, how to measure the cost of asymmetric information, the cost of moral hazard in a simple framework. Lots to do. Let's get started.